Hi and welcome to the channel, my name is Philip. The purpose of this video is to explain the concept of the outlet wiring. So no matter how many wires you might encounter inside the electrical box, you can apply simple tools and sound logic in helping you figure out what is what. I will do my best to help you visualize how the electric current flows depending on the connection you're dealing with, so you know what happens when you start switching the wires. But if by the end of this video you are still unsure of your next steps, please contact a professional to assist you with it. Regarding safety, always shut down electricity at the breaker panel before touching exposed electrical wires. So let's start by understanding how an electrical outlet works. Note on the history. The National Electrical Code requires that all receptacles installed in all 15 and 20 amp, 120 volt circuits be grounded. Ungrounded outlets are easily identified by taking a look at the face of the outlet where you plug things in. In most modern homes, there should be three holes. There are two vertical slits and a roundish one located underneath the pair of vertical ones. That's a grounded outlet which has been required by electrical safety standards for all structures since the mid-1960s. Ungrounded outlets do not have the third hole. If your house predates the adoption of this requirement, you don't have to replace your ungrounded receptacles with grounded ones, but it would be a great upgrade for the future. And for this, I would suggest you contact a qualified electrician. If one of those flat slots in your outlet is horizontal, that means that you have a 20 amp outlet instead of a 15, which is a higher quality product which can accommodate power hungry equipment such as power tools, so you are in luck. In order to support a 20 amp outlet, your circuit breaker must also be rated at 20 amps or higher. So in this video, I will concentrate on the post-1960 standard, which includes the ground connection. Let's compare the types of outlets you can encounter. GFCI versus non-GFCI. GFI, also referred to as GFCI, is installed in areas where water can be a danger. Places such as the exterior, bathrooms, kitchens. It is important to use a GFCI outlet because if it senses that the electricity is being grounded through anything other than its intended wiring, like a body of a person, the circuit interrupter will cut the flow of voltage to itself and to any other devices down the line. Once the tripping hazard is eliminated, you push in the reset button and you are back in business. GFCI works by measuring the incoming current through the hot wire and compares it with the amount leaving through the neutral or its own ground. A small difference of just 4 or 5 milliamps between the readings will trip the shutoff feature. You might have noticed built-in GFCIs on the devices that are meant to be used in the wet areas. A good example is a modern hair dryer. It works the same way, so if there is a leak of voltage outside of the device, it shuts off the power. A word of caution. GFI outlets and circuit breakers must be tested monthly to make sure that they function properly. Testing is done by pushing the test button. That shuts down the power in the circuit and is supposed to pop the reset button up. By pushing the reset, the power supply is restored. If something didn't act as it's supposed to, you want to replace the faulty GFCI device. Non-GFCI outlets do not have any buttons and are installed in the dry areas, such as bedrooms and living rooms. So any place that doesn't have a source of water in it technically doesn't need to be equipped with a GFCI. Another great reason to install a GFCI outlet, especially if it's installed like this as the first outlet coming straight out of the circuit breaker before it feeds into other ones, is that if it is wired properly, it will protect all of the other outlets. So if this one trips, all of the other outlets that are connected from this line, they will also stop working. So especially if your other outlets are not GFCI protected, Put one in in the beginning of the line, and the whole line is covered. 
In order for the outlet to work, it needs to have three connections, a hot wire, a neutral wire, and the ground connection, all leading from the circuit breaker panel. The hot wire brings the current in to power the plugged-in device, while the neutral wire returns the unused current back to the electrical panel. When you insert the prongs into the outlet, you are closing the loop between hot and neutral, passing the current through a device and powering it in the process. Ground wire is connected to the third hole and it's there as a fail-safe. In case of an electrical short, the created energy gets redirected away from the surface of the outlet, back to the breaker panel. So to install a regular basic outlet, you need to identify and connect the three wires. Now is a good time to get your multimeter out. If you don't have one, you can get a simple one from Amazon for about 5 or 10 bucks. It will serve you for years and will ensure your safety. I highly recommend investing in one, especially if you plan to mess with more electricity projects in the future. Some videos on YouTube might suggest methods of finding proper wires without a multimeter or a voltmeter. And I am strongly against that. You don't want to risk your safety by saving a few dollars. Get yourself a simple tool and then play with electricity safely all you want. Without going too far off the topic of wiring, having a multimeter in your household will allow you to check the state of any batteries that you have, starting from the tiny ones from your wristwatch to a large battery in your car. You can check your light bulbs, did they burn out or the issue can be somewhere with the light fixture itself. You can troubleshoot air conditioning issues. You can check for brakes and wires and much, much more. It's a very good tool, especially for a $5 purchase. Bottom line is, if you don't have a multimeter, get it. Borrow it from a friend if you must. And you will wonder how you've lived without one all of these years. Next thing is the circuit breaker safety awareness. Make sure you turn off the circuit breaker corresponding to the outlet you are working on. If you don't know which circuit breaker it is, if it's in your line of sight, you can use a light fixture to tell if it turns off or on. If the outlet is in a different room, you can plug in some kind of a music device like a radio. This way, if the music stops, you disconnected the right breaker. Now let's identify the wires. With the circuit breaker off, remove the outlet from the wall by unscrewing two screws and pulling the plate and the outlet out of the wall. A standard outlet will have three wires. First, we must find a ground. It should be a green or a copper wire. Quite frequently, it is not insulated. Now we must figure out which of the remaining wires is hot and which one is the neutral returning the power back into the circuit breaker. Brass screw is usually hot and silver one is usually neutral. And hot is usually on the right side and neutral is usually on the left. But then again, you can look at the labels by the screws or the rely by colors of the screws, but you should always double check using a multimeter. This way you're doing the connections for certain and not relying on a proper installation by the last person to assemble this outlet. Plus, not all outlets and light switches have the connections in the same exact places. The connections can be frequently reversed depending on the manufacturer and their particular design, as you will see a little later in my example. So using a multimeter for correct identification is a must. To correctly identify the wires, you want to disconnect all three of them and spider them out so they do not touch each other. After that, you can go back to the circuit breaker and turn it back on. Now you are expecting the hot wire to have the current, while the neutral one will be dead since it's not connected into the power loop. With the multimeter setting on AC, place the black lead on the ground wire and the red lead on one of the wires in question. If there is no reading, move the red lead to the other wire. Whichever one shows the current is the hot wire. Usually it's the black wire. The wire without the readings is the neutral. Now you can turn off the circuit breaker and connect the outlet according to the manufacturer's schematics. If you happen to have a 20 amp outlet, the horizontal slat indicates the side of the neutral wire. It's just another trick, but it doesn't apply in most cases. But what if my outlet has more than three wires, you might say? 
It is actually still pretty simple as long as you have a multimeter on hand. Let's see how other wiring options can influence your installation. If you have more than just three wires, that means that this outlet is part of a chain sending power to other outlets nearby. On the back of GFCI outlets, there is a main line connection, which we have gone over earlier, which connects the hot and the neutral wire, which feeds the power to the outlet is connected to. Plus, it adds a second set of terminals, which are covered with a tape on a newly purchased switch. The covering tape is there, so it can be wired as a basic outlet at first, before connecting any optional lines. So just the three contacts are exposed at this point, the hot, neutral and ground. The sticker also stops you from mistakenly connecting the hot or neutral into the wrong slots, which can still bring power but will not let the GFCI protection work properly. Let's remove the protective sticker to reveal the additional connections on the outlet to see where these extra wires go and what purpose they serve. There is one additional connection on each side, located above or below the hot and neutral connections. This depends on the manufacturer. These two screws are directly connected to whatever is above or below it, similar to a light switch that is always on. This connection is always labeled as load or charge, since it charges the wire with a current to be transferred down to another outlet or a light switch by replicating the main connection. If it's on the side of hot, then this load screw sends the hot current forward. This means that on the other end of this wire, it must be connected into another outlet or a light switch in the hot slot. The same is for the neutral. The chain starts at the circuit breaker going in into the outlet, then leaving the outlet through the bottom and connecting to the next outlet's neutral main connection. The ground connection might not be easily seen, but it follows the same route. It goes from the breaker to the outlet, into an outlet, into an outlet, and so on. Normally, you can put eight to 10 outlets and lights on a single circuit breaker connection chain. And throughout this chain, you will have three to five connections in each box, depending on the type of connection. Something else to keep in mind about the GFCI protected circuit is that it should stay under 100 feet in length. So here's how this power distribution happens, so you can easily identify the type of outlet you opened up. One of the options allows the original GFCI to be connected with all of the wiring, and then it sends on just standard three wire line throughout. It will have three connections in each outlet throughout the whole chain. If you encounter another GFCI on the line that is forwarding the power, it will have five. And the last outlet in the line will always have just three connections. So by opening up the outlet, you can already tell what it is trying to do. Is it using power on its own or is it feeding the power down the line? For example, in my house, my main GFCI garage outlet next to the circuit breaker panel sends two lines out, one to the front of the house exterior outlet and another to power two outlets in the backyard. And that results in seven wires in this main outlet box. On this outlet, the load charge is going through the top and on this one, it's going through the bottom. So you always want to make sure to read all of the instructions and compare and see what is going to be different. Because here we're obviously reversing some of these areas, so these contacts are probably gonna go completely upside down. So what if you have five wires or more in your outlet? Dismissing the obvious ground, what if you have four or more? This gets a little more complicated and my recommendation will depend on answering a few questions. By looking at the cables inside the outlet's electrical box, you wanna be able to answer the following. Can you see the wires entering the box from the back? Are those wires in distinct and connected pairs? Are the wires in each pair contrasting in color? If your wires are not color coded into pairs and you are trying to connect more than three wires, it's best to contact an electrician. Your worst case is if you have 
all wires of the same color including the ground. It is still doable, but would require more extensive testing by verifying the continuity of each wire with a multimeter, identifying which outlet they end in and to which terminal they stretch. I might make a video on a continuity testing process in the future. So assuming that there is color coding and you can possibly visually see each original pair of the wires. So let's identify the wires at the point of connection. If all five wires are unplugged and spidered out with a breaker on, with the black multimeter lead on the ground, only one of the possible four combinations will result in a reading. This is your main hot. If you have more than one hot wire or more than one neutral wire connected to your line connection on the outlet, contact a professional. An outlet may have two hot wires so that one wire may function as an always-on transmutation from the power supply feeding the other wire. The other hot wire would transmute that voltage to another device or series of devices. However, reasons and specifics can vary greatly and that's why I recommend a pro to investigate it further. If you have multiple colored wires, pay attention which one it was. Black, red, white, hot is usually black if it's wired properly. If you have another wire of the same color, most likely it is the transfer wire that will get connected below or above your connection. In my example, I have six wires plus the ground, three white and three black, and a seventh is a bare ground. If the wire color ratio is one to one, most likely you can rely on a color coding. If one of the wires turns out to be hot, the other wires of the same color are most likely transfer wires to the other devices down the line. If you look inside the box, try to see which wire is paired in sheathing with a hot one. That should be the neutral counterpart and should be of the opposite color. To verify the connection, wire up the hot to the breast screw on the line and the neutral to the silver screw. Ground is connected to ground. The rest of the wires at this point are not connected and not touching each other. Plug in a light into the outlet and turn on the breaker. If the light is working, you connected the proper hot and neutral. If it does not, shut off the breaker and try another neutral wire from your selection of non-powered ones. Just make sure that only three wires remain connected to the outlet at a time and the rest are not. Eventually, you will find the proper neutral and the light will come on. Turn the breaker off and look at the remaining wires. There will be one or more pairs left. In my example, there are two pairs, two black and two white wires. These get connected to the load terminals in the corresponding colors. If your hot was black, then connect all of the remaining black ends to the load terminal above or below it. The same with a neutral. If it was white, connect the other non-powered white ends into the load or charge terminals below or above it. Now you can check the other outlets that are fed power by this line by plugging in a lamp into each one. If some outlet doesn't work, do the same wire testing on it to determine what wire does what and if it's connected properly. Basically, it's a process of elimination. In each outlet and light switch, you must first find the ground, then the hot wire. With those identified, the rest of the wire connections can be ruled out one by one, as long as you can clearly picture the current flow in your head. And this is it. Now that you saw how easy it is to change out an outlet yourself, there you go. Make sure to always turn off the power at the circuit breaker and always use some kind of electricity testing device. Don't leave anything to chance. Electricity hurts and I've been shocked before. It's not fun. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit a like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please post them below in the comment section. It's been fun making this video. I hope it was educational and useful for you. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.